meeting to order. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to call to order this regular scheduled meeting of the Palm Springs Public Arts Commission, Wednesday, April the 20th, 2022. Jay, would you do the roll call? Yes, uh, Commissioner Armstrong. Present. Commissioner Newkirk. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Pritchard. Here. And we're waiting on Commissioner Lesniak. He's, he just texted me saying he's joining. Okay, so. great. All right, we'll give him a moment. <clears throat> I think this is what's called a pregnant pause. <laughs> And while we're waiting, Jay, do we have any indication of when and if we'll be able to start meeting in person? So that did come up at one of our uh, internal staff meetings. And uh, what the plan is, is that we're going to prepare one room that can do hybrid meetings. So individuals could participate via Zoom and participate in person if they like. I think the only room we have like that is the council chambers, and that requires a, a crew to operate the cameras and let people in and out and such. Mm -hmm. So it, it may be a little while, but I think the uh, city manager's objective is to take advantage of technology and uh, what we're allowed to do to um, allow the meetings to be just slightly more flexible. Right. Because city council has had members of the public in their audience, have they not? They do, they have members of the public in the audience now, um, but they also try to accommodate individuals via Zoom. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll see in the um, comment sections, they will uh, group it into people in the council chambers and people calling in by phone. I'm not sure if they're, uh, and they have uh, guest participants via Zoom also. Right. Jay, is the, is the hybrid setup expected to be temporary or is this seen as like a long-term new way of doing things? I think hybrid is intended to be the long-term new way of doing things. So. Very good. I don't know where he is. I think we just start, Russell. All right, yeah, let's move along. All right, <clears throat> so we're in the roll call. So item C, acceptance of, acceptance of the agenda. Does anyone have any changes that they wish to make or can we have a motion to accept the agenda, please? I'll make a motion to accept the agenda. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. All right. Okay, There's item D, public Aye. comment. This is the time set aside for members of the public to address the Public Arts Commission on items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the commission and agenda items if the member of the public cannot be present later in the meeting at the time the item is heard by the commission. Additionally, members of the public may address the commission on each item listed on the posted agenda at the time each item is heard. Although the Public Arts Commission values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, it generally cannot take any action on items not listed on the posted agenda. Three minutes are assigned to each speaker. Jay, do we have anyone of the public here? We do not. All right. Then we'll move along to item E, which is approval of the minutes of the meeting of January 23rd, 2022 and March 16, 2022. Does anyone have any changes or additions to the minutes that we've received? No? All right. May I have a motion to accept that? Oh, 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 oh. Please. please. Some reverberation going on there. That was me. I apologize. All right. So, so motion to accept that. Second. All right. Gary and Barrett are both good. Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from the February and March meetings. Second. Second. I think it's because Matthew. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yeah, we're getting this weird. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, can you mute, mute yourself or do something while well, that's get that cleared up? All right, so item E is remarks from the chair. Our chair is currently making her way back from Brazil, so she has no comments. So we'll give Matthew a moment because I want to move on to item G, the items for discussion and approval. So Matthew, can you hear us? I can. All right. Yeah, because we're not seeing you, and I'm seeing you showing up twice on my screen, whatever that means. But, but anyway, you are with us, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's move on to items G, items for discussion and approval. There you are. Item number one is to discuss and approve the extension of the loan agreement at no cost of the Gonzala Libreja, and pardon my pronunciation of that, suspended in time artwork. And for the previous commissions, this was a piece that it was commissioned by the Public Arts Museum that we on the Arts Commission allocated, I believe it was $25, $25,000 to cover the installation amount. And if Jay, if you can give us a, an update on that. And the question is, what was the end point for the installation as it currently is? And what are they asking for the extended period of time to be? Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, I believe the um, current loan of the art piece ends uh, later this month, actually. Uh, so it, it was um, initially approved in November of 2019, but I don't think the agreement was actually executed until April of, uh, I'm sorry, April of 21. And so, um, it's that's really, approximately when it was installed was last April. Right. And it was, a, well, that's when it, the uh, agreement was executed. It was a one year agreement. And so now at this point, actually, I think they're having an event. They wanted to get lighting and such up on the, um, uh, on the art piece. And so they're working with the uh, city's um, engineering and planning department to get approvals to do that. But we also want to make sure that if they do do that, it is something the Arts Commission uh, would like to see continue through an extension of that um, agreement for a year, another two years, whichever uh, your pleasure might be. So the museum is hopeful for at least another year? Correct. Okay. Um, yeah, because my thought was would be to extend it through the end of uh, December 31st, 2022 just in case we as the Arts Commission want to use this space because it is technically the art part, part of the downtown park and would be available to us to do an installation on. But end of December, end of April, Commissioner, have any thoughts? Is, is there any financial demand from us on this, Jay? No, there is no more request for money. It's just, and one thing that we will request with the extension is that the museum actually adds the Arts Commission as one of the financial sponsors. Mm -hmm. so, it, so there's no downside to us? Really, no. Okay. No, it's just a matter of do we want access to this property prior to April 2023? So end of December, April, it's only a few months. So if they want a year, uh -huh. I'm fine with it going to April, end of April 2023. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. All right, then somebody want to make a motion to that effect? I make a motion that we extend the contract to April 2023. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, very good. Moving on to item two, discuss and approve request from the Palm Springs Art Museum to renew artwork loans at the airport and the convention center. Now I emailed Jay a week or so ago um, because I would like us to have a list of what the artworks are at each of these locations and a copy of what the loan agreement looks like so that we could 
consider this? Because I don't even know what the art is. It's just a general right. extended to for whenever. Yes, and uh, until uh, Chair Merrigan uh, had to leave the country, she was working with the city attorney and actually museum staff to tour uh, these locations, take a look at the artwork, and uh, I guess get some feedback from a museum in terms of what they were looking for in terms of a an extension. But um, uh, I, I think we'll, we'll have to touch base with uh, the chair, see what she's uh, managed to uh, the information she's gathered. Hopefully the list you're speaking of, I think right. we'll look at those pieces. Okay, then I suggest that we table item two to our May agenda, if everyone's in favor of that. That's fine. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, item number three is a report on the one PS picnic, Public Arts Commission participation and updated budget. Uh, Barrett or Matthew, would you like to take it away? Want me to do it, Barrett? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, first of all, the picnic was a success. And I'm getting feedback also. Um, let me see what I have here. Um, our total cost came to $572.91. I believe our budget was $2,300, and there should be a total of uh, should be a total of seventeen twenty seven point oh nine that remains. Uh, we received positive feedback throughout. Hold on, just for a second. Let me see if I can change that. <laughs> and the limited amount of time that I was there, I do think that the kudos to both Barrett and Matthew for pulling this together was relatively short time frame. Our little table looked really good. There was nice items on it, stuff to interact with kids. So congrats on that guys to doing this. My apologies for that. I think I've taken care of it. Um, when we were there, we received, we received nothing but positive feedback uh, about our presentation, about our being there, about the benches downtown, about just public arts in general. I heard nothing, and Barrett, I think you'll agree with this, nothing but positive feedback. Um, there were a few people that came up to us, and I actually contacted uh, Stacy, and I also uh, emailed, included Gary on this. One of the in gentlemen came up, Jerry Ellercon, which is with, he's a commissioner also, the chairperson for the commission. He asked about the bike racks, because he needed bike racks. He had asked about the spider. Um, he has gotten in touch with me and said the spider has been refurbished. It's on site, it's working, and that Stacy has provided him more bike racks for his summer uh, programs that go on. Um, Barrett and I also developed a list of things that we may suggest for other times that we want to have the commission represented. So if you want, we can forward that to you uh, later on and you, we all can review it together. Well, yeah, because I think it's a very good idea for us to have in place the canopy, the table, sort of basic signage with our website, that sort of information. So yeah, could you guys work up a proposal perhaps for the May agenda? And that's something we could vote on and move forward with. Okay, and just to, uh, before closing, the cost included uh, artist directory flyers, grant sheets. Um, Barrett created a game which people really loved, a tablecloth, which was $206 with Palm Springs Public Arts Commission written on it. Um, things for the, the kids that came by and also crayons and artist copies for, for people to participate. Um, yeah, Barrett and I will get that list to you. Yeah, perfect. It was a yeah, fair job well done. Thank you guys. Can I, can I just make a, re a request um, if you, because I'm, I'm gonna address this and then something else I'm dealing with, but I think it will help us to be thinking of our expenses of things that can be amortized over a number of years. So as you said, your table and the tablecloth, those can be used in subsequent events. And, you know, and then let's break out the stuff that was specific to this one event that cannot be used again next year. 
And I think it will help us sort of sell through the concept and the potential of these things uh, to City Hall as well. That yeah, exactly. Expensive. Yeah. yeah, we need the set of ingredients that are going to be consistent and then the event specific items that we can plan for and produce. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Great. Okay, moving on to item number four, commissioner updates, temporary art subcommittee. I don't believe that committee has met. Stop in the middle of the glove is, and utility boxes that Commissioner Favreau, who is not present. Park and Rec, Scary, would you have, have an update? Yes, um, and this is, uh, I'm, I'm putting this in Parks and Rec, even though it's not technically Parks and Rec. Um, I, uh, Jay connected me with um, somebody about uh, my idea of the North Riverside area of doing an art walk in there. And he very nicely connected me to the city manager who then said, it's not a park, but you should engage parks in this. And um, here's a plan that was approved uh, from 2010, which I sent you all. And um, the idea of the plan included having public art and a lot of educational components in that. Um, so there was a bit of a back and forth internally that went on for a couple of days of who should take the lead on this. Um, I then had a meeting uh, with my parks liaisons last week. And I, you know, they were like, well, this isn't a park. Why are we involved? And I said, well, potentially it could be. And um, the Arts Commission will take the lead on this. Um, Tracy uh, is helping me. And I said, look, we will write everything up. We will take the lead. I just need your buy off. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to get involved at the beginning rather than an end of game approval, because I think it'll be stronger. So the idea is we will go to parks and we will then go to sustainability. We will create an overall proposal, which will then go to the Measure J Commission for some funding. And the idea is that the Arts Commission budget will sponsor and pay for um, some art specific pieces. And then we work with the other commissions to do things like benches and shade structures and things like that and monument signs, which would be needed mm -hmm. to create this eco art walk along the <clears throat> I then had a meeting on Monday with the new assistant city manager and with um, the head of the parks and rec um, from uh, who's also on the, the liaison to the parks commission as well. And I basically was trying to find out how are we supposed to go about this? Because um, there seems to be a, a, a sort of a stumbling of how do we deal with multi-commission opportunities? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and in a lot of ways, I think that we, this is the future for Palm Springs. We need to be doing commission work together because citizens of Palm Springs do not live in this hermetically siloed world. Art needs to go in a park. Art may be involved with sustainability. It may be involved with human rights and may all these different commissions. So we need to figure out how we, how we mesh these commissions together. Um, the, the new assistant city manager gave me a couple insights on how to pitch this and take this through city council, which I thought were interesting and are good for more than just this specific project. And she said, one of the things that they're talking about is for us to get a general, gen, I don't wanna say generic, a general approval on the concept before we go too far. And she said, if there's a way we can get city council to approve the idea of something, rather than here's the final idea, here's what it's gonna look like, here's what it's gonna cost, just is this a priority for the city right now? Um, so we need to work on that. And that's a bigger discussion that I'll, I'll talk to Tracy about when she's back. Beyond that, she said, you know, we're, we're more than welcome to address this with city council members prior to an entire city council pitch. And so our next step is we're gonna um, get this together as much as we can in terms of presentation and then um, uh, go to Lisa Middleton because the park, potential park area or art walk area is in her district. So she, it, you know, it's district five. Um, and you know, an, another point which makes this interesting is uh, they've added the CV link in this area and it's gonna be going along there. So this is gonna be a high traffic area for not only Palm Springs residents, but Palm Springs visitors as well. Uh, just one one more point, and then um, and the thing that I the point I made to them is we are aware that this is a multi year project. This is not where all the work is going to be done, and it's going to be done you know at the end of this year. So in terms of budgetary reasons, I said we need to really be thinking about this as stuff that we need to have money for right now, but the final thing may be two years away, 
by the time we get approvals from all the commissions and city hall and, and the stuff is implemented. So we need to think of our budgeting process that way as well. It's not just give us all this money and we're gonna spend it immediately, which triggered something that came up as well with the mural discussion. So it, it's sort of a, a, a procedural thing that I think we need to address. Right. If I may, question, why does Park and Rec say that this is not going to be your, a park? Because it's not a park. What is it? It's just public land. Public land. But yeah. if the public land is going to have benches and shade structures and plantings, who's going to take care of these? Well, that's a good question because there's already um, uh, dog poop bag stations there and lights and there's a sidewalk through it. So the city's already taking care of it. It's just not, and, and Jay, you can probably speak to this, but it's just not classified. <laughs> okay. So that's what, and, and, and you know, the, the point that um, I made with the assistant city managers is, you know, we're trying to be proactive here mm -hmm. rather than reactive. Yes. And I said, I think that there is, you know, if you look, there is no park, technical or, or not technical, anywhere sort of, I mean, the, the, the most southerly park is Dumuth Park. And, there, and the, the one on the closest to the mountain is Baristo. There's nothing for the rest of the southern part of the city. Yeah, and I think it, it's a very worthwhile project to move forward because you can combine the park component, walkway, the horticultural aspect, as well as the art aspect. And given that we finally have a beautiful new downtown park, which I think is getting a lot of use and a lot of great recognition, this seems to make sense that it would be a, a powerful addition to the city. So if you can just inch it along in the various directions that you need to, and I think it's a spectacular idea. And for us to do a whole, to have the opportunity to do an eco art installation park where everything is made from recycled ingredients would be spectacular. Yeah, I, you know, as I said, it, it sort of is, Conceptually, it feels right for the area, and it it, uh, it was pleasantly reinforced when I read their plan from 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, where they said, you know, have these stones with the, the plants named in them and make it educational walk and everything, which could be cr pretty great. I think. Yeah, yeah. Now that the new development is happening there with the apartment, it, it's it seems to be a no-brainer. Well, there, there's Cody Place, which is open now, and then they're developing Elan, which has 300 homes in it. Yeah. And then, as I said, with the resurgence of all the Sunny Dunes retail and that whole sort of um, sort of uh, antique district there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and does anybody have any questions for me at all? Because I know we've dis discussed at the last meeting. I would just add, it's probably more in the category of Parkway uh, than Park. And I don't think there's any programming that happens there, which is something the uh, Parks Department is more responsible for, uh, activities and, and things like that. But I, I can't say, you know, there's a hard definition for park versus um, land with plants that is city owned and recreated upon. And, and, you know, that was one thing that Teresa even said, as she said, look, if this moves forward, we may designate this as a park. Yeah, and, and Commissioner Armstrong, you're certainly doing the right, you, by approaching all of these various entities, we will come to the, the end point of what it will be, whose responsibility, and then we will be the art component. So yeah, it's a good, good direction. I would like to add something, Gary, you had mentioned about plants, desert plants. Huh? And I think this also, so we can look at the educational aspect of this, because it's a fairly safe area to have students in that area learning about their environment. And I know there's grant funding for that because we did it at my former school. Um, so if we wanted to use that aspect, there's probably grant funding for that. You know, and, and it's, that was one thing that, um, that Jeannie uh, mentioned, the woman who's in charge of the library and she's also parks and rec. She said that, you know, there's a school right there just a couple blocks away. And she said they would really, be, you know, and uh, as I said, one, once we sort of get the pieces in place and we know conceptually, I think then we do go after some grant funding. Um, sustainability has access to all of that as well. So, okay. Excellent. 
Okay, other topic under item four is Art is Everywhere Neighborhood Grant Program. This is the um, program that we voted on recreating what we did the last couple of years. We approved $25,000 for five, up to $5,000 per grant for five neighborhoods. So this is approved by city council that each grant that we do, so it's up to us as commissioners to reach out to various neighborhoods of town, merchant groups, as we did with the popsicles and sunny dunes. I approached the antique vehicle, the bagel place, so we have the opportunity to do this installation. Would you like it in your neighborhood? So if we can come up with the community and the project that caps out at 5,000, then we would vote it on vote on it in the Arts Commission meeting, and then it goes to council for approval, and then it would be moved forward as a project. So, so we had thought that we could get it approved, that we would have the control over to spending the $5,000 with our approval, but no, it, it does need the council approval after we create the project. So that's just that's the basic update on that. And and Russell, I I, I can add that we have had uh, one neighborhood organization reach out with some interest, mm -hmm. and it's the Talkwitz Creek Golf Neighborhood Organization. Uh, they're interested in doing an installation at one of two entranceways to their neighborhood. Um, the chair of the association emailed just a short sort of inquiry about it. And I did follow up with him and, and ask him to fill out the questionnaire that's online. I don't know if they've done that yet. Um, but I believe the process will be that like once they, um, as when a group sends in their proposal, we can bring it to the commission and then discuss who on the commission will sort of help shepherd it through. Um, and I think there was some, Tracy was really helpful in um, preparing this to go to the city council. And one of the things, one of the feedback she got from staff is that they wanted like, like really clear transparency on how, on who on the commission is working with these neighborhood organizations. Um, so just so everyone's aware of what the process is. Um, well, so yeah, and, and just to re reiterate from our standpoint, as we as commissioners, we can, if we happen across an artist who has a piece that could be available for an installation, as was the case with the John Cerny popsicles, we had the opportunity to do this installation. So I approached the people in Sunny Dunes neighborhood. So we don't necessarily need to wait for them to fill out an application. We can approach neighborhoods as well if we have something that's available to us. So that way we can perhaps get more results on getting these grants moving forward. Sure. Um, so, so I'm happy to continue talking with the Talkwitz Creek Golf Organization. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and, and hopefully bring that back, you know, in a month or two. Yeah, perfect. All right. So Barrett, the do the applications go in digitally? Those are, are those on the website right now? There's a form on the website that we're directing people to. This one just came in through an email for now. And who would, um, so then uh, you're, you're the one who's catching those, right? Uh, right now, Tracy has access to that, but I believe I can check them as well, yeah. Okay. And how are we? Okay, um, Main Street update. Matthew, do you have something for Main Street? I do. Um... There's one item on here that I think Gary will be interested in considering what he was just sharing with us. But the first item is about gay pride. Uh, it's the 36th uh, year for gay pride here in Coachella Valley or in, in Palm Springs. It'll take place the fourth, fifth and sixth. The thing that, uh, first of all, too, it was mentioned in the meeting that the rainbow stripes need to be updated. That's not really our responsibility, but I just thought I would bring that up because uh, it was mentioned. Uh, the director of Gay Pride stated that there will be another art installation, not similar to the one that uh, there was there last year with the, the rainbow laser production of the show. Um, but that he really was happy that that received a lot of national attention. So there will be another art installation. He's not sure exactly what that is. Um, in the meeting, 
today, Councilman Kors and Gary, this may be of interest also, um, spoke of funding for shade structures in the public parks. You specifically refer, mentioned Burbisto Park. Um, Jay just sent me information prior and I wasn't able to read it. I was looking at it at 359. <laughs> um, but I'm interested in finding out because I think shade structures, I've looked at those before online and they can be very beautiful pieces of art and still provide shade. So I would like to find out more information on that. And if I do, I can share it with Gary if he's interested in that. I am happy to uh, share this information. Uh, this is the CDBG funds, Community Development Block Grant funds, which are used for low to moderate income neighborhoods. So the work done with these funds has to be in these neighborhoods and uh, the parks identified, Barista Park and Duluth Park fall within uh, the uh, census tracts that are eligible for this. So um, what the city council decided a couple years ago was uh, instead of doing what they typically do of having an RFP out to nonprofits, asking them how they would like to utilize um, the CDBG funds, and then as a result, the council gets lobbied by a lot of different nonprofit groups. So they made the decision to focus the CDBG funds, or what's called the capital improvement part of those funds, on just city projects. So last year was uh, repairs to uh, Baristo Park, uh, to Duluth Park bathrooms and air conditioning. And uh, um, this year is what I think we're just right now in the second year of this type of programming for city projects. Our engineering department recommended uh, uh, the shade structures that they were planning on installing. So this is what the council will consider for approval. And uh, I think to move it forward, Commissioner Lesniak, as you're thinking, we'd have to work with the engineering department if there's a desire to do a more, um, like a call for artists to design these. Uh, otherwise they do just pull them off the shelf and have them installed, I think. So uh, that's, um, uh, you know, we can have uh, further discussions with uh, the uh, engineering department on how to proceed with something like that, if, if assuming that that's the objective here. Thank you. Do we have any thoughts on that? Uh, well, Jay, I'm just wondering, do you have access to the plans for the downtown park and some of its original inception? Because there were shade structures in some of the plans for that park and some of them were pretty cool looking. I mean, I think they were, I don't know if they were probably not artist created. The park planners were probably going to have them fabricated more by a metal shop or something or engineering firm. Well, I'll check around. I was, um, came on board, I think, right when some of those, uh, when the park was being yeah. uh, planned. Um, I'll see if I have anything you know, that I can distribute. Yeah, and I'll look also, I'm not sure if I saved any of the original blueprints, but I may have because we worked with the park designers. So it's certainly something we can look into and, and research. I have one other question. Would it be okay if I contacted the engineer to make him aware that we're interested in working together? Uh, yes, that's fine. In fact, I would really, I'd probably walk over there myself just to confirm. Um, you know, that we could uh, go down this path without upsetting, uh, you know, any of the work he's already has in place. So um, we, I think we can both do that. I'll let him know. Uh, you may also be contacting him. Yeah, that would be great, Jay. So I, I wait, I, I, I'm a little dense on this. Matthew, where are you putting your shade structures? They're, well, as Jay said, they're only permitted to be in two parks. Yep. Again, this was mentioned briefly in a meeting today, and I didn't have any background information on it. Jay just sent me the information on it, and I wasn't able to look at it prior to the meeting. So if, if these are, if the engineering department has these shade structures, why is this Arts Commission? Well, that wouldn't be us. It would only be if we were going to commission artists and do an RFP for artists to create Okay. One. So, okay. so yeah, so Jay and Matthew can check 
on what direction the engineering department would like us to go, use existing ones, then it's their department, do art ones, then it's us. Got it. Great, thank you, Matthew. That's it. All right. Um, downtown benches. Uh, Matthew is going to bring forward at our next meeting, the possibility of hiring a cleaning firm, Desert Arc, to do the cleaning. But I have a question to Jay on this. If this is something that we were going to have a firm do, would it not need to go out for requests from everyone or proposals from everyone that does this sort of work? Yes, it, it would uh, require some kind of a solicitation. Right. Depending on the amount, the solicitation can be phone call bids, uh, written letters, or formal uh, full-blown RFPs. So it uh, just kind of depends on the level. Right. Because um, Matthew and I actually met yesterday. So what I would like, Matthew, as I mentioned uh, yesterday and for the other commissioners to know, with this particular company, I would like to see, being that the city um, maintenance department doesn't have the willingness to do any power washing on the benches at a lower setting. I would like Matthew with a cleaning service with Tyson Knight, who is our artist responsible for the maintenance of the benches currently to supervise what they would actually do. And then we could put out requests for other bids to come in. But I wanna make sure that even as a lower setting, power washing is still going to be not destructive to the benches. Because right now Tyson is basically doing a hand scrubbing and cleaning them. So, and we would still need to maintain or retain, pardon me, Tyson as the person who does the art touch-ups and cleaning. So we would then have, we would still, we would then be paying two entities, Tyson and whomever. So, but I want to be assured that some cleaning service can actually do a respectable cleaning job. Uh, can I ask Matthew, uh, um, I think it was last meeting or two meetings ago, you mentioned um, the idea of phasing out some of the benches and just bringing them back to their terracotta color because the maintenance department was concerned about this. Has that been dropped? Uh, that has not been dropped. I'm waiting till actually Tracy gets back and thinking, because she was part of that conversation and maybe having a Zoom meeting with those people involved, including those people downtown to discuss that. I just know from my discussions with those people downtown, they're not in favor of having the benches painted out. Right. Well, and also it's, this is an arts commission project. So it's we who would basically, we control the project. So it's, I mean, we can certainly take their input, but as far as I'm concerned, these benches are not ready for any phasing out or back to the ugly cute brown that they were originally were. We just need to go back and Tyson's test pilot project, he's maintaining those beautifully. They look spectacular. Those were done in 2019. And then the other phases were done in three periods over 2020, 21. I guess we finished in 21, have lost track of all sense of time. But we just need to address, go back to phase one, address each bench. Are they sound? Do they need anything? Because we should have two to three years more longevity on the benches and just address them as an as needed, as needed basis. I would also like to add, I did speak to the executive, the, the executive director of the program and she said she's willing to meet downtown. No problem with that. We can meet with Tyson and go over the process and procedure. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking also too, if the low pressure hose doesn't work, I'm sure they would also be willing to do a hand wash and rinse for the benches. Right. But if that's already what Tyson is willing to do and we're paying him to do it, then I don't think we would really need to double dip. But, but get the information from us and get a, a test on one of them and then we'll have an informed decision or discussion. Okay. Or discussion and decision. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so can we move on to item number five, which is the Richard Wyatt mural. Um, Gary and I attended a meeting at the Desert Highlands Estate 
couple of weeks ago, uh, April the 12th, actually. And I addressed the community members who were there and said that we as the Arts Commission, it's our responsibility to go out to every neighborhood that has an art project and make sure that it's, we're getting the wishes of the neighborhood met. And we laid out the possibility that we have the options of if the neighborhood would like the mural repainted as it is, have a new, new mural painted with some more relevant or more current historical component, or would you like the mural as it is replicated on ceramic tile and attached to the building, as we have learned through the engineer that we hired that this is possible. And they very strongly said and emphatically said that they want the Richard Wyatt mural recreated on ceramic tile on the building. So I requested a letter to that from Cynthia, the uh, head of the committee, have not received the letter yet. So perhaps what I will do is email Shonda to have that so that it's in place. And then Jay, moving forward, <clears throat> if we have their letter stating that this is what the neighborhood wants, is there a need for any other further public meeting on this issue? I don't think so. No, yeah. uh, you know, it's, um, it, and that's in regards to the plan moving forward, that sounds like that would be the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, ceramic, if the Arts Commission decides it wants to pursue that. Um, and then, um, of course, I, I technically it's a mural, so it requires the the uh, planning application, or I don't know if it's a new mural, or it, you know if it goes through the same process that a new mural would go through. But then also, I want to say it ultimately does get back to City Council, right, for approval. Would would City would, during a process with the City engineers that would, they would rely on the firm that we hired and gave the engineering report. So they would take that as support that the wall will hold the mural. I I believe they would, because okay. uh, that's basically supplying them with the engineering report. Right, and I say that because it was our former assistant city manager who was also uh, the city engineer who uh, reviewed and and took a look at that, he arranged for that study. All right, and that's something we would need to have as an action item in our May meeting or the June meeting. And then the other question is, because the budget is rather large, um, without having it in front of me, I think it comes in at like 280,000. So would we as the Arts Commission say that we would be willing to commit 100,000 to it and rely on the city to come up with the other founding, funding? Or would we have to bear the brunt of that and try to recoup some costs by doing some crowdsource funding or solicitation for donations? Um, that's, that's up to the commission. I, you've laid out some possibilities. It could be any variety of that. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously to get the project done and probably under contract, uh, sufficient funds would have to be available. All right. All right. Well, then it's something we can put on our May or June agenda for a more in-depth discussion. But it's great to know that there's no need for any further public meeting. We can just deal with it within our commission. And, and, and Russell, who's been in contact with Richard Wyatt on this estimate? I think primarily Shonda has. And being that we have, and, and Jeff asked you about, I think I need to know the clarification on to what extent Shonda can participate in once it gets to us ag agreeing to do this as a project and enter any funding being that she lives in that neighborhood. Yeah, in a nutshell, the city's attorney said he didn't see any conflict of interest, no. Okay, great. Because I, I would like, right. yeah, yeah, I would like Commissioner Favo to be sort of the lead on this because of her community. So I will email Shonda to try to get this letter in place for us and then we can move forward. My, my, my concern and, um, because I know the estimate on this was done uh, a, a while ago. Right. Well, that's one thing I would have Commissioner Favo 
get back in touch with Richard Hyatt. Say, okay, we've got forward movement on this project. We need an up-to-date budget timeline, how you can interact with the neighborhood because the neighborhood wants some interaction with their community and put all of those plans in place so that we can thoroughly discuss it in whether it's May or June agenda. Yeah, because, you know, as I said, the just uh, availability of resources may shift this entire timetable. Yeah. And that then also will shift our budgetary concerns as right. well. Yeah, because being that we have on item 10 is the review and approval of the Arts Commission budget for 2023. And that's something that I also want to table. And that's, we can deal with that because without having our chairperson here and considering something like this, I've got some notes of how we could break down, as I mentioned before, comfortably allocating 100K from our budget with the hopes of getting the funding from others. So I don't know if that would be enough of a commitment to start the project or, you know, but that's something we would have to sort out and have it on our agenda so we have a good, like 30 minutes to discuss that as an agenda item. Because it needs, it needs some time to like, process and think and consider. So, um, mm. the only, um, uh, uh, Vice Chair, the only thing I would add is um, the uh, city will be moving forward with its budget. Monday we'll be having preliminary budget discussions. Uh, there's always the opportunity to request budget amendments. Uh, throughout the year, uh, even if that's necessary, because you know it's only needed for certain thresholds. But um, uh, you know there will be some desire to have public art commission buy off on uh, the numbers that go in for the public art fund. Right. And well, we did look at that in one of our last meetings, did we not? Was that in March? So we best basically have signed off it because we understand that we have the latitude of taking money and shuffling it around and making that so I think it's basically sort of approved. But thank you. Um, and essentially, the unallocated dollars are in an acquisition line. So right. if it is desired to use funds for any large project, they're already there. Exactly. Yeah. All right, shall we move along to item number six, culture, cultural, because I can't even say it, <laughs> item number six. <laughs> um, uh, well, I, 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 my, my support and apologies for Jay for being a little thrown off track by a city council member. Um, he did a valiant job of pitching this concept <clears throat> and um, a city council member said that he had a plan for the garage um, that no other city council members knew about and city staff didn't know about and the Arts Commission didn't know about. And it turns out, as Jerry pointed out to him, his plan, Arts Commission dollars cannot be used for his plan. Um, so that sort of stymied the conversation. Um, and so right now the project is on hold because the city council member uh, needs to do more thinking on it. Um, two, uh, two interesting points came up in discussion. Um, uh, uh, City Council Member uh, Holstage um, was concerned about another piece of artwork going downtown, and she felt that we need to do more outside of downtown. Um, and uh, that, that, that's a fair, fair criticism mm -hmm. um, or a, a assessment. Um, and then the other one was uh, the, uh, City Council Member Woods um, sort of spoke very ardently on uh, maintenance of uh, murals, and he's not a big fan of murals overall because they require a lot of maintenance and they uh, they fade in the desert heat, um, which I, I guess he hasn't looked at all the sculptures that have <laughs> that are in the desert that need a lot more maintenance and are more expensive to maintain. Um, so that, that was a thing. My, my question and my concern, and this is a question for Jay specifically, is we weren't asking for formal approval and that was 
laid out in the document. This is not approval. This is just the, we need approval of the idea so we can move forward and solicit artists because we cannot hire them until we know we're moving forward. And they didn't quite seem to grasp that. And they're like, well, why are we giving money when we don't know what it looks like? And so I guess it's, it, it is a chicken or egg thing. How do we get approval for something before the, it's complete? Well, I, I believe they did say to try and uh, kind of flush out what the um, artwork might look like. I, I don't know how that works with artists that you tell them, you know, here's, you know, what's creative. Here's, here's what we think right. you should do. Well, we can't actually do that because if you look at, although it's a larger scale project, and we did that for all of the benches, we did an artist call and they submitted their plans for what the bench would look like. So we could do one or two things. We could just simply ask Pete, who we want to do the, be as their art director, if he's comfortable with the artist coming up with some rough sketches for each portion or the walls that they're going to do with the hopes that those would get approved in, in the funding, or we could reassess it and say, we would like $5,000 approved to get artists paid to submit their plans either way. But, but Jay also mentioned in an email that the being that we're in a period of time where the city council and city managers reassessing what all of the commissions do, they might be reluctant to move forward with a fairly large project like this at this time. So I don't know how that factors into it. But then to go back to what Gary said about Christy Hall said wanting to have more art in other neighborhoods. This is a key point going back to our neighborhood grant program. If we are proactive and go out to neighborhoods and, and approach them, then we've got the possibility for five different neighborhoods in the city to have art in them. And, and um, Christy Holstage also said, you know, she was waiting for, and she wished the Arts Commission would present an overall plan, which I believe we have. Um, yeah, we had a pretty good plan laid out. Yeah. And then further to that, if we want, as Jay also mentioned in the email, if we would like to have this go back to city council with, if we want to get some sketches first from some of the artists, then we would request that it be a new business item for them so that we, yourself, Gary, or I could be on the Zoom council meeting or in person so that we specifically could answer questions to them because we have the depth of the information and the knowledge of what the project is about. So that's also an option. I would, I would suggest that we do that <clears throat> with a project like that so that we don't have to rely on Jay to remember every detail that we've talked about and what the artists would do. And we could answer all of those questions at the time. Mm -hmm. And, and one other point which relates to this and came through my uh, conversation with Teresa, the assistant city manager on the parks idea, which she said, you know, uh, we need to in also ensure that this is not only going to be a priority for the, an overall priority for the Arts Commission, but then a priority for city council where they want to be spending the money. So it seems as though they're trying to do more long term strategic thinking and allocation of resources as opposed to piecemeal, hey, here's a cool idea. So as I said, it, it seems like there, you know, there's... <laughs> yeah, that's it's, sort of a tricky one because it's, yeah. can you project two years from now what art installation you want to do with this artist in this spot? Yeah. No, it's, it's more whatever that word is. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the thing is, you know, art needs to be a balance of proactive and reactive. Right. You know, we, you know, art needs to be immediate. Otherwise it's a little corporate. Yeah. Well, and I don't know if we can turn the tables a little bit and maybe ask the consultants to come and discuss with the art commission, their preliminary plans for the signage, the directional signage, and maybe get feedback from them on how uh, art murals on those walls might work. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who they are, uh, or their accessibility, but. Uh, well, yeah, this is a frustrating thing for me. After Friday, after the council meeting, when it was pulled, I emailed both 
Council Member Woods and Holstead saying that, okay, whoever this consultant is, can we arrange either an in-person meeting or a Zoom meeting? And neither one of these council members replied to our email. So how do we interact with consultants if our city council members won't even interact with us? And, and I, I guess, Jay, my other question is something you addressed is public arts funds cannot be used for Wayfinder. You know, that's a, that's a utility. Um, yeah, it's, it's something about functional furniture uh, that, you know, if it's used, because that would allow the developers who paid the funds in to get it back out and maybe satisfy, uh, you know, bench requirements that the city puts on I'm using public art funds. I think yeah. that's why it was written that way. Um, so in this case, interesting, I mean, the city's the owner of the parking garage though, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really these two things have really very little in common and really very little need for interaction, but we're willing to hear what they have to say if they would respond to our email. Yeah. So perhaps Jay, you could encourage them to respond to us. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. That was kind of my idea with the, um, uh, having it as a, a an action item in the um, on the agenda the next time we talk about these things. So. All right. Okay. Well, perhaps I'll re-email both of the council members and see if we can take a next step with just meeting right. with them, get ideas from them. And you saw um, um, that uh, council member Holstage. Uh, her action was just, just to forward that request to me. And so, you know, we're getting into a vicious circle here. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. <laughs> so your suggestion for moving forward, Jay, is what? Uh, I would say if we can get a meeting with these consultants, have them come to the commission and explain what they have in mind. I, I heard you know, they weren't going to be activated for a few months still. Right. Um, but in addition to that, some of our um, next actions, particularly if it's a, just a report on the work of the commission, might be a good opportunity to have commissioners uh, in front of the city council to discuss and explain uh, some of the intent. Uh, with the caveat that we're waiting for the other shoe to drop with uh, how the city wishes to prioritize uh, activities and work with commissions, so. And when do we think that shoe will drop? I think tomorrow. I oh. think, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll hear at the council meeting if they talk about it or maybe it gets, uh, um, you know, maybe more information might be requested. Okay. So we, we don't know exactly, but at least it should be addressed by tomorrow. Okay, well, I'll tune into the meeting tomorrow night and that will give us some sense of what to do next on, on this project. All right, so shall we move on to item number seven, commissioner ideas for new project. Uh, these are meant to be like a 10 minutes or less if anyone has something that they wanted to lay out as a proposal that they're working on just for general information to the other council members. So does anyone have something? It's, 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 it's just an, uh, a generic concept that I've been, I've probably been, you know, rambling about for, since I've been here. And I, I would like to try and pursue curated art walks throughout the city, highlighting our entire uh, catalog of artwork. And if there was a way we could curate it to thematic events around that the city is doing. So Matthew mentioned that they're gonna be doing a bigger thing for gay pride in November. I think it'd be great if we could find if there's a handful of art by gay artists and highlight them and somehow promote that of 12 to 15 pieces throughout the city that are by gay and lesbian transgender artists. Um, I don't know if we have that information. I don't know if when we, we um, purchase an art or um, if we, you know, if we know that about them, or if it's just we sort of know it as an aside. <laughs> well, it is actually something we could because last was it last year, somewhere in the not too distant past, um, the artist who we worked with, Jeff Peck, known as Everett, who did the fault line in the pit, mm -hmm. 
he actually organized a basically a gay art walk for uh, lesbian and gay community artists who were in the downtown neighborhood and went to galleries who were showcasing artists. That's something that can be created that incorporates our art as well as artists who are in galleries. Mm -hmm. So that's most certainly something that we can. You know, like I have no idea who did the Lucy Bronze statue downtown. You know, maybe that's a gay artist for all right. I know. Um, yeah, but it, yeah, we'd probably have to focus on some of the more current art, yeah. um, like Jeb, for instance, Fault Line. Uh, a few of the benches are done by LGBTQ yeah. community members. So, mm -hmm. I also had something to this discussion because mm -hmm. um, I think there's an opportunity right in front of us for an art walk, and we're missing like two you know, approximately, we're missing thousands of people to come to the convention bureau every week. And there's, there's an artist walk right across, a sculpture garden right across the street. And many of those people don't even know it exists or what the art is there because they're busy doing other things. If they've got 15 minutes and there's a pamphlet there, they could very easily walk over there and, and enjoy the art. And I think that's something that we, that's something that's already in existence. It's a beautiful sculpture garden. And I think we should, we should start there first, or I would suggest starting there first, because there are people in the convention center every week. Yeah, but Jackie, the Houston Plaza is a little jewel that few people even know about. They drive past it. It's, it, it's nothing. So, yeah, and this is something that we could do also with signage, because uh, right now we have an issue with our QR codes being inactive because we need to pay the hosting company, whatever it is, $169 in some sense. Um, I sent this to you, Jay. So, but having a QR code at the entrance to the plaza, which would link to our site, that would explain what these pieces are, when they were installed, who the artist was, would, would be a key to sort of addressing, giving more information to public on what the art actually is. Cindy, Cindy took care of that, uh, Russell. So, so it's paid and she's having uh, Madeline to send her all the um, contract and uh, password information and everything. So. Oh, fantastic, good. So if I may, a question to that, Jay, because I know the city is, has put a request for proposals for to hire a city social media person. And where do we stand on that? Uh, I asked uh, if we had such a person, I did not get an answer yet, but the response I got was that Cindy took care of the uh, QR sure. codes for the Arts Commission. Um, so not quite social media person, but I, I don't have an answer yet on. Right status of social yeah. media consultant. Yeah, because something that I would like us as a commission to perhaps consider being that the city, if the city does not have a person in place now or won't like in the next couple of months or a few months is doing a, <clears throat> a contract extension with Madalena. So stuff like this doesn't happen where we find out that our, all of our QR codes don't work. So, so if you could let us know, Jay, what if any timeline there is, then we can address that at next meeting. Okay. All right. Thank I have you. one other question. Would the commission be interested, and I'm sorry to interrupt, would the commission be interested in my contacting someone to maybe present uh, a proposal to the commission regarding the, the, the creation of a pamphlet or something for an art walk? for the uh, sculpture garden across from the convention center? That was a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of the answer. Give me a moment. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, certainly you can reach out if, if this is something we wanted to do as a given, because a, a pamphlet, because we did used to, on occasion, table at the Village Fest, and if we had a pamphlet there, that would also be a good way to let tourists know 
where they could or should go to see some of the art and give them information as well as the very few local people who go to Village Fest who can inform them. So a proposal to that effect would be, I would be open to that option. It's also a starting point. Yeah. Matthew I'm, Matthew, I'm thinking they could say something in public comment, but if the commission decides to uh, uh, pr provide a uh, pamphlet, it would probably be um, go through the um, procurement process to get uh, a few uh, different bidders and then um, <clears throat> have that done. But my understanding is in the recent past, there haven't been a lot of bidders. It's probably one or two shops in town that do uh, that type of work. So, okay, All right. cool. All right. So moving on to item eight. Does staff have any anything to report on this yearly work matrix thing, or is that something that will be part of council meeting tomorrow? That's the council meeting tomorrow. Okay. Um, item nine, and I hope that the staff update is that the payment has been made to the sign company that did the put up the banners. Yes, payment has been made, but not by the city. Uh, what the city attorney and city manager's office identified was that Desert X was responsible for the payment for maintaining uh, those those sculptures and. So uh, they had sent uh, the um, vendor over to Desert X and, and the vendor was paid. So, oh, yeah. fantastic. All right. And I, item 10 is review and approve our Public Arts Commission budget for fiscal year 2023. So as we touched on earlier, we did basically do this in our March meeting and with the understanding that the funds are there, they can be moved sort of melded to our needs. So do any of the commissions, commissioners feel that we have to have any further discussion on this tonight? Mm -hmm. No, all right. And we'll move on from that. Any uh, item H, report from director slash staff. Uh, Commissioner, I just have this uh, one request that came in from a council member about the um, uh, art piece by Crescendo. Um, it was part of the temporary art program. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he had previously requested if the city can purchase that art piece and make it permanent and add uh, one of the art benches to that location. Well, that's very good because I wanted to have that. We well, actually had that on the agenda, I think last December, but we did have with E. Tyler Burton, who is the artist, the agreement was basically for a year or so, <laughs> we didn't really define it, um, but we have, so the year is basically up in June. So I'll make sure that that's on the agenda because I absolutely do want us to buy that and make it a permanent installation. And I had pestered the city to place a bench there. So when we do approve that it get purchased, then that would be the impetus to get an actual bench there. So I am very happy to hear that that council person is willing to have that because it's a beautiful piece of art. It's beautifully placed. It's magnificent. So I'm sorry, what piece is this? This is the Fossils of the Future, which is on the Crescendo property, which is a open land property that's owned by the city in Little Tuscany on the corner of Racket Club West and Leonard. Yeah. And if you've not been, you have to because it's sited beautifully. We have the QR code, which will now be active again showing Tyler working the piece and she's explaining what her thought process is on it and yeah it's a great great piece and I think the purchase we did um, if I remember correctly it was 15,000 was the purchase price so we did a five thousand dollar loan payment so the final money would be ten thousand just so you have that information for next meeting to think about All right, any other, uh, so item I, any other commissioner comments? I've got one quick thing. Sure. Um, at the picnic, um, the president of a local Rotary Club 
uh, spoke with me and she was interested in having someone from the commission speak at one of their upcoming meetings. This is apparently a different Rotary Club than puts on the, uh, the Chalk Festival who we worked with. Um, so I said, yeah, I'd look into it. I, I sent the information to Tracy because I didn't really know what the process was. And she's like, sure, anyone can go talk to them. I don't know what their schedule is or and I don't know if my availability would work with this. So I wanted to just see if anyone was interested in and who, who is this other Rotary Club? Um, her name is Michelle Nobleman. Tracy thought maybe they meet downtown at lunchtime. Um, I don't have the name of the club in front of me. It's on her card somewhere. But um, so why would there be more than one Rotary Club in Palm Springs? Are they like gangs? Were they like the, <laughs> the West Side Story? I, I don't know. I'm not a Rotarian, um, but there <laughs> apparently are multiples. I don't know if they're competitive or if they work together on stuff or what, but. Well, yeah, get, get some information on who, who, who they are, when they're meet, and who their competition is, and, <laughs> and we'll consider going to a meeting. Okay, I'll uh, reach out to the president and get a little bit more information. All right, perfect. Thanks, Barry. Anyone else? I just have one other thing to say, and it, oh, it, two minutes. Minutes. it goes in with what you were just talking about fossils of the future and what we were talking about maybe having some type of artist walk during gay pride or other events, just something to think about for the future. Could we possibly commission a couple of artists during modernism week or gay pride and have them at their pieces at specific times? So individuals that are attending those events could say, okay, I want to go to this event because this artist is going to be here between nine and 10 and talk about this specific piece. Mm -hmm. Just something to think about. Sure. I, I will say that modernism is very protective of the events that happen during modernism. Yeah. They do not allow anybody, they call them bottom feeders if you try and do an event <laughs> during their, their event because they make money. That's how they, they, they approve the brand and they approve all things like that. Yeah. Um, I, similar thing with gay pride, but I don't think they're as vicious as modernism week people are, right. surprisingly. So it's, you know, I, to me, it's the sort of thing where we should, um, we can reach out to the, the, the event people like modernism and pride and say, hey, these are opportunities you may want to consider. And then modernism will probably sell that opportunity to a sponsor. Yeah. Okay. Right, but, but it is a, a, a cool idea to have some thing organized by the Arts Commission where we would have a couple of artists on site during some auxiliary event, whether it's Village Fest, which might be easier, although people would have to drive to wherever it is. So, But there's certain of our pieces that are walkable when people are already at Village Fest. So, Jay, would you re recall when we did tabling with Somewhat at Village Fest. Who did we table with? I I don't recall. Um, that might have been something uh, Jennifer Henning handled right. when she was working with the Arts Commission. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm uh, good friends with a Village Fest commissioner, uh, Christopher Ramirez, um, who unfortunately, but anyway, I'll reach out to him and and find out what their options are there. So that might be a possibility. So, okay. All right, well, if there's no other business, could I have a motion to adjourn this meeting at 5.15? Make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 5.15. <laughs> no, no, to adjourn to our next meeting. It's, you've got to adjourn to our next meeting. Regular meeting on May the 18th, 2022. On the, at the regular meeting on May 18th, 2022. 4 p.m. by a teleconference. 4 p.m. by a teleconference. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Second? Second. All right. Meeting is adjourned. Don't we have to Hours 15 calls. minutes. Yay. Bravo. We did it. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.